Okay, so the Stormwater and Flood Control Utility was established on March 20th, 2014. So we have three full fiscal years of operations behind us now. So I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about financials for FY17, but mostly I'm going to focus on the projects that we've been able to complete using the resources available to us through the utility. So this slide shows the FY17 revenues, um, totaling a little more than $1.9 million, which were in line with our expectations. And this slide shows our expenditures, um, broken down into several <coughs> categories here, PS, personnel, OM is operations and maintenance, OOM, other than ordinary maintenance, uh, also referred to as capital. Um, we have debt service and we also have indirects, um, totals a little more than $1.2 million. So uh, I'll just call your attention to the, the difference between the revenue collected and our expenditures. And the difference is money that we have encumbered for projects that span fiscal years. So a lot of time when we do construction projects, it's a timing issue. Um, and, you know, we, we are spanning the summer construction season. So that's why you're seeing that difference between revenue and expenditures. And this slide is just showing the three full fiscal years of operation and kind of a side-by-side -side comparison for revenue and expenditures, and, and they're mostly consistent. And just a few words about credits. Um, so our billing for FY17 included more than 11,000 properties citywide, and we issued uh, credits to more than 1,000 properties for a total value of $76,503. Um, so credits can, can be issued for many reasons, uh, small residential <coughs> like gardens, um, protected land, and, and also need-based credits, among others. So in FY17, we uh, paid salaries for the equivalent of <coughs> 9.78 full-time positions out of this utility. This is everything from the folks who drive the street sweeper to a portion of my salary to the financial administrator to engineering staff. Um, what you will notice is in FY18, um, we did do a little reorganization within the, within the department after uh, I became director, and that number's down to a little more than six, the equivalent of six full-time positions, and you'll see something similar to that for FY19. And this slide, uh, very uh, similar to last year's presentation, just talks about indirects, which I think is a, a concept everyone's familiar with. So it, employee benefits need to be accounted for, um, you know, health insurance and uh, uh, workers' compensation, retirement, and so on. So this is a charge back to the utility um, for uh, those benefits. Why are we doing what we're doing? relative to this utility and the answer is the EPA is the regulatory authority that oversees the our stormwater system and they issue us what's called an MS4 permit and we are anticipating the issuance of a new permit on July 1st 2018 and we will need to uh, communicate with EPA by the end of the fall and acknowledge that we are covered under this permit and that we will meet its requirements. And then in mid-2019, we will need to have a more comprehensive plan about how we are going to come into compliance with this permit. So what's in the permit? It's got six <coughs> major sections. Um, they're there, um, I won't read them, but I will note that we have already taken measures through the utility to be in sort of what I would call c compliance already. Um, you know, we, we always have to upgrade our operations, um, but we have done <coughs> a lot of work to put ourselves in a really good position to, to be in compliance. Um, and, and just a, a, a couple of high points, um, illicit discharge detection and elimination. So this would be a situation where we have a sewer connected to a storm drain. So anytime we find a situation like this, obviously sewage needs to go to the, to the wastewater treatment plant to be treated before it's discharged. So if we find a situation like that, we need to address it immediately. So uh, you know our department works with whoever the property owner is to address that situation and we have you know an ordinance that assists us with the administration of this so a few words about operations and maintenance 
Um, so I always think it's helpful to have a map just to kind of show the, the scale of the operation. So catch basins and intakes, this is where the water flows to. And here they are, more than 5,000 all over the city. And every one of these needs to be maintained. And this is how we maintain them. You have a catch basin cleaner. Um, you can see on the left-hand slide, it's got uh, sort of like this clamshell attachment and the catch basin becomes filled with debris. So we have to travel to the catch basins and scoop the debris out. Um, it goes into that body and, and we dump it. Um, I will mention this is a 2005 truck. We were able to replace the body, which had, which had completely rusted out with a stainless steel one for a little under $20,000. Allows us to get more time out of the truck. And maybe some of you have seen these labels around town. Um, we want to encourage people to not dump things like oil down the catch basin um, or things that don't belong in a river. So this is just a friendly reminder for people um, that this is actually flowing directly to the river without any sort of treatment. Um, and this is also part of our, our permit, too. This is part of permit compliance, is we need to educate the public about what, what is this thing and where does it go. Um, and this is an example of how we do that sort of public communication. So more infrastructure maps, uh, manholes, more than 2,500 all throughout the city. Each, it's kind of hard to see, but each one of those is a dot you look really closely. So what needs to happen to each one of these? They need to be maintained, you know, they, they, uh, they get displaced or they break or, you know, get hit by a snowplow or whatever. So um, this is something that we do with our in-house labor. Um, <coughs> you can see um, there's quite a bit of work that, that goes into it. Street sweeping, so this is part of keeping debris out of the catch basin, sort of preemptive, you know, we don't want uh, leaves and branches and trash in the streets. Uh, not only is it unsightly, it uh, causes flow problems. So we sweep all the streets by ward um, annually, as everyone knows, and then monthly sweeping um, in Florence Center and, and sort of in the downtown corridor, we also sweep um, special events, you know, the holiday stroll, the summer stroll, um, to clean up after those. So we also have known trouble spots throughout the city that flood kind of areas that are just on our list that we need to keep an eye on. So these are regularly patrolled. Um, I've just kind of highlighted them here for your information. They're kind of all over the place. Um, so again, it's a kind of a personnel and a time thing, but you know, King Street, Church Street, Federal Street, Nonatuck Street, Ryan Road, Prospect Street. So th there's a lot of places that are firmly on our radar that we know we have to keep an eye on. Storm event flood mitigation. So this is a very timely slide. Um, we think about the weather that we've had over the past couple of weeks, you know, really, really cold and then snow and then heavy rain and really, really warm. So you look at that picture on the left-hand side, instead of, um, you know, branches and leaves there, think about ice. So that's what we've been chasing for the last week and a half is ice um, on these grades. <coughs> and, you know, if we don't remove it, the water has nowhere to go. Um, so this is kind of the regular maintenance that we have to do, and it's really year-round we have to do it um, because the rain never stops. Um, so what you're seeing are, are pictures. Um, uh, the picture on the right-hand side is actually down at the wastewater treatment plant at the flood control station, and that's an area we have to keep an eye on too because if we have debris that starts backing up into the flood control station, that wreaks havoc with our pumps. Get that too. Drain ditches. Well, ditches are sometimes referred to as country drainage. Um, it's not necessarily a, a defi as defined of a system as, say, like a pipe system, um, but it still requires maintenance because it overgrows or gets clogged with trash or whatever. Um, so it's still something that we have to pay attention to. We have more than six miles of these designated in red kind of all over the city. Here's one of our trouble spots, King Street Brook. This is something we pay attention to um, 
daily, weekly, and annually in a variety of ways, um, but we go in there every year and remove uh, debris from the channel between Barrett Street and the culvert behind CVS. Um, we can't allow debris to, to back up against that grate, which you see in the second slide over. More infrastructure culverts, more than 200. These are the channels that pass underneath the roadway. Um, if they were to fail, the roadway drops right into them, so very important for us to be maintaining. Stormwater system inspections. Um, so this is sort of a, a, an interesting uh, part of what we do at the DPW. Um, we have, we refer to it as the camera van, and you see it down in the, in the bottom middle slide. Um, and it's actually a shared resource between the sewer and the stormwater enterprise. And if you look at the slide in the top right-hand corner, or the picture in the top right-hand corner of that slide, that's the camera. We open a manhole and we drop that camera down into the system. And that thing runs through the system and we can see what, what you're seeing in the second picture over is actually a picture inside um, the Market Street Brook. And so we can see, you know, is there a breach somewhere? Is there debris in the way that's impeding water? This is how we find a lot of our problems and then fix them. But these investigations are absolutely integral to what we do because this is providing us information we otherwise wouldn't have access to. You'd be like digging a hole and to, to find your problem. Um, so this is, uh, we were using a camera van from 1982. Um, and so we uh, have the pleasure of a new truck now. Um, again, a shared resource between sewer and stormwater. Um, cost almost $300,000, but well worth it. So speaking of pipes, we have more than 120 miles of stormwater pipes throughout the system. And here's a few photos of, uh, of our personnel, um, <coughs> just kind of what sort of repairs are we able to do in-house versus what we have to hire a contractor for. Um, we, we are able to, uh, a lot of this infrastructure is buried at depths that we can't reach with our equipment. Um, so anything more than, you know, 10 feet starts to become a little bit tricky for us to get to. Um, but just, I wanted to just include a few photos of some of the in-house repairs that we are able to do um, if it's not at too great of a depth for us to reach. Outfalls, more than 400. Definition of an outfall is a point where the municipal stormwater discharges to a waterway of the United States. Um, so this goes back to the MS4 permit, and we need to make certain that we don't have any sort of illicit discharges going into our waterways, let it read, you know, sewage or chemicals, um, and, and oftentimes that happens. So we, we need to know where these are. We need to be able to monitor and test them and make sure that there's only water flowing out of them. And here's a photo of an outfall for a reference. Another part of, our, of the operation that's funded by this utility is stormwater management for new developments and redevelopments. Um, anytime there's a project that disturbs more than one acre in the city, a uh, stormwater management permit is required. And we have dedicated staff who work with um, contractors and developers in town to make sure that they're in compliance with these requirements. Um, you're seeing some pictures of West Hampton Road, TJDL development, and Olander Drive for ServiceNet. Isn't that the lumber yard on the lower right? Lower right is um, infiltration galleys, and that's related to service now. So switching gears for a minute, this is, um, <coughs> this is our flood control system. Um, and I have two slides here. This is the Mill River portion, um, just to give you uh, an idea of the scope of the levee system and associated pump stations. Um, in particular, um, at the 1,000 linear feet of the levee, and this is important for vegetation management, which I'll speak to a, a little bit more in a moment. And this is the Connecticut River portion, and you can see 4,800 linear feet. <coughs> 
So now we get to vegetation maintenance. Levees have to be maintained. This falls under the jurisdiction of the Army Corps of Engineers, so they have uh, particular standards that they hold us to. Um, they were the, the folks who built this system for us, and we have to maintain it to their liking. So one of the things we have to be very cognizant of is vegetation control, because if we have uh, large trees growing into the side of the levee, it can undermine uh, those levees. So we, we have to be very careful to uh, strictly maintain this. Um, a lot of the mowing we do is done in-house. A lot of vegetation control we do is done in-house. Some of it has to be contracted out because it's in areas that aren't accessible. Um, and we completed a project uh, a couple of years back um, to do some restoration uh, with an outside contractor. And that's actually what the debt service that you saw in the, um, in the expense slide was from. Pump station, so this is the pump station down at uh, Hockenham Road, um, adjacent to the um, wastewater treatment plant. And um, maybe some of you are familiar with the uh, old pumps that are inside of it. So our staff does kind of regular maintenance on these, you know, changes the oil, spark plugs, that sort of thing. Um, we've also put some money into the uh, fuel storage tanks, and that's what you're seeing on the right-hand side, diesel and gas. Um, we had to make some improvements to come into environmental compliance. And these are some photos of the old Springfield Road Oxbow Bridge. Um, we had to do a short-term stabilization here. You can see the uh, top photo, um, that footing had, had sort of shifted and was being undermined. So this was an in-house repair that we did to stabilize this bridge. Um, this is an ancillary structure to the flood control system. Um, we're also taking a look at the uh, city's emergency flood plan um, and making some updates to that. Um, we're also taking a look at some of the penetrations of the levees that are done by our utilities and third-party utilities. Um, so it's, it's kind of an um, uh, overall assessment of, of what is um, the flood control system and just updating the material that we have and making sure that our operations um, are solid in the event that we need to deploy stop log structures and the like. So I'll speak a little bit to kind of some large scale repairs that we've done uh, in <coughs> FY17. Here's a, a map um, just sort of showing, you know, where these improvements have been all over the city. Um, I'll speak a little bit, just kind of project by project here briefly. North Farms Road, we did a pretty significant project here over the summer to replace the water line. Um, as part of that, uh, we did some stormwater work totaling about $100,000. Uh, it was an eight inch drain pipe and a stone culvert. Um, when we do large scale roadway reconstruction, we try to bundle utilities for efficiency purposes. And you will see that in a lot of these slides. Woodlawn Avenue, this is an example of something that we were able to do, to do in-house. Um, this is like a before and after photo. So the, the bottom middle is before and the top left and right is after. And same thing, Belmont Ave, uh, we have some very talented folks who work for us. So, you know, you, you only see kind of what's on the top of the street and don't necessarily pay attention to what's below it. So the purpose of these photos is to just give you an idea of what you're actually driving on top of or what you're seeing when you see that grade. Day Avenue, this was another significant project that we undertook uh, over the summer. Um, this was uh, more than a million dollar project, uh, stormwater more than $100,000 here. Um, we replaced the, um, the pipe uh, going right down the middle of the road. This is Woodmont Road, um, and this actually ties into the next slide, which I'll get to in a moment, uh, which ties into the new underpass um, for the bike path. And uh, that's kind of a known trouble spot for us, known flooding. So we've been working with MassDOT to basically make improvements to that entire system. Um, so this was a, a little excavation that we did on Woodmont Road. And then if you look at this photo, this was actually funded by MassDOT as part of that underpass project. This is behind DA Sullivan. And we had a very old drain pipe here that had heaved out of the ground and was contributing to some flooding problems. So this work is complete and uh, we're seeing some relief. 
Wilson Avenue, interesting story here. This started as, as street flooding that was called in by the residents. And uh, we did some investigation and uh, determined that we needed to install a catch basin. Um, and we did, spliced into the existing system. Um, this, this work took place at a depth of 12 feet. Uh, we had a call upon our contractor who, who we um, use for situations like this. And that's a photo of their work. Lasky Park, everyone's familiar with this. Um, so there was some drainage work associated with phase two as there was with phase one. Um, the, the biggest um, thing of note here was we did have sewer and stormwater infrastructure combined here before we separated it. So we actually had stormwater flowing to the wastewater treatment plant. So that's not a good thing because that contributes to flow and we're treating water that we don't actually need to be treated, uh, that needs to be treated. Um, and there's uh, an expense associated with that. So that is kind of a highlight of, of phase two. Um, and Hankley Street, this is a big one. So this is a nearly $3 million project. Um, and what you're seeing there is uh, 30 and 36 inch drain pipes. Um, that's uh, about as big as it gets in the city. Nutting Avenue, uh, we had our TV camera van um, doing some inspections and uh, we determined to break in the pipe um, and we retained the services again of our contractor. This was at a depth of 13 feet. Um, this was about $75,000 project here. And this is an example of um, <coughs> of one of our, uh, one of the folks who works for the SOAR stormwater division. Um, he actually built that on Penn Castle Drive. So again, we do, um, we do as much as we can in-house, um, you know, because there's obviously a, a cost savings associated with that. So that's an example of the sort of work we're able to do in-house. Riverside Drive, this is part of a project to repair a sewer leak. Um, and while we were repairing the sewer leak, we discovered a broken drain pipe. So the picture's kind of dark on the bottom left of your screen there. Um, but this was in a very difficult spot. You can kind of see in the photo in the top left there. Um, so again, we, uh, we had our contractor do that for us. Ryan Road, we repaved Ryan Road last summer. Before we were able to repave it, we had to address some drainage problems. Um, you know, drainage is the enemy of good pavement um, and it can definitely, um, you know, undermine new work. So we wanted to make sure that we addressed existing drainage issues there before we paved the road. And so these are a couple of photos of that work. Pipe and sub drain near Burt's Pit um, as part of that project. And finally, Audubon Road. Um, this is a million dollar project. Stormwater piece of this is, is a quarter million dollars. Um, and what you're seeing in the bottom right there is the new culvert that was installed as part of that project. So to wrap up here, um, I'll talk a little bit about um, what our plans are for, for the coming year um, and beyond. Um, Hinkley Street will continue into next fiscal year um, or and next calendar year, of course. Um, so we will be doing outfall reconstruction at Riverside Drive. Um, that's going to start in the spring. Um, we're also looking at drain repairs on Chesterfield Road as part of future roadway reconstruction. And we're looking at 9,064 linear feet of Burt's Pit Road. Um, survey and assessment of that are already underway. Um, there are drainage improvements that we are going to have to undertake uh, as part of any roadway reconstruction there. So we are currently taking a look at that. And as far as the flood control system goes, um, we are going to be uh, doing an assessment of the actual pumps at the flood control building uh, on Hockenham Road. Um, we are looking to award that contract probably in March, um, and we're anticipating about a $175,000 contract um, for someone to uh, do an assessment of those pumps and, and sort of operationally which direction we need to go um, in terms of making improvements to them. Um, we also need to continue to 
uh, assess the vegetation situation along the levees. Um, you're seeing that uh, a photo of that on the right hand side. I mean, this is this is just sort of a a constant uh, upkeep that we have to do, and we're trying to institute some sort of long range plan <coughs> to deal with that. And that concludes this year's stormwater and flood control utility presentation. So we, we thank you for it. That was, that was excellent.